Banned books have been one of the hot topics to have emerged recently in the culture conversation across the nation. It's one segment of the broader free speech question. Where does one person's freedom to speak or act cross a line that might endanger someone else? More recently, books on certain topics like race or gender have drawn questions from some about whether or not they should be universally displayed and available in schools, libraries, or elsewhere. On Wednesday, July 19th, Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman made a stop at the Northshire Bookstore in Manchester as part of a series of readings he is doing across the state to highlight the issues around banning or restricting access to certain books deemed to be problematic by some. The Lieutenant Governor was joined by Bob Stannard of Manchester, Mia Schultz of the Rutland Area NAACP, and Ashley Ihaz Austin, one of the co-owners of the bookstore, they each presented examples of banned books or music. So this book is about a teenager, um, a, a boy, a freshman in high school as he enters his, his first year of high school, dealing with themes of um, mental health, sexuality, homosexuality, uh, domestic abuse, um, and, uh, and incest. So it is... Uh, it, it can be dark at times, but it, 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 it does have a not-so-depressing ending. <laughs> so I will read you a bit um, from The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Billy Holiday. Anybody know Billy Holiday? Yeah, of course you do. Her song, Strange Fruit, which is arguably one of the most powerful songs that should be heard by every single American. The song was profound and powerful depiction of Billie Holiday's horror over a lynching. It was banned from US radio for its heavy, morbid content. Upon its release in 1939, it was banned by radio stations and the government uh, proceeded to go after her. And I'll just leave it at that. There's some people that think they went after her a little too far. Which brings us to the Black Panther Party. Not like Marvel's Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, but a movement sparked by Black power. Huey Newton and Bobby Steele, leaders of the Black Panther Party, developed a list of goals to explain what they were fighting for on behalf of Black people. Their goals included their overall, oh, included, sorry, and then there's a picture, because it's cute. Fair housing, anti-racist education, an end to police brutality and peace. The overall goal was to fuel black people's survival, success, and freedom. Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman read from the children's book, And Tango Makes Three, a story about a baby penguin adopted by two male penguins in the Central Park Zoo in New York City. Suddenly, a tiny hole appeared in the eggshell, and then, crack! Out came their very own baby. She had fuzzy white feathers and a funny black beak. Now Roy and Silo were fathers. We'll call her Tango, Mr. Gramsci decided, because it takes two to make a tango. <laughs> After his reading, the event was opened up for discussion by the 30 or so people attending, which yielded a range of questions and viewpoints. Uh, but these books that you list here, because I looked up at the uh, Vermont Library Association, and they said there relatively there aren't any books right, that are banned answered. in the state of right. Vermont. So, That's right. So this is a little misleading, then you would say. I mean, I don't think so. Top it's a list of most banned books. It's not banned in this state. No, these are banned books in the country. These are 2,000 books banned in some municipality somewhere. Oh, so this is a, a nationwide effort that yeah. you're talking about. Well, there's a nationwide effort to ban books, and so I thought it would be important to talk about it. Well, there are, as I just said, there are, pe well, there are people that ran for the school board in order to remove, to be in a position of power to stop books from being in school libraries. So it hasn't succeeded here. But that doesn't mean the effort has not been made here. Yes, please. Yes. Um, there's one book, it's called Gender Queer. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know if, the, if this bookstore had Gender Queer. I pulled this from Amazon. It's 240 pages. It's graphic sex, pictures of children in sex acts. It's child porn. 
And basically, I think my position is uh, all this is well and good, but it should be age appropriate. If this book is in grade school, it doesn't belong there. So, I mean, I think that's one thing we have to be careful about because if you destroy childhood, you've destroyed everything. So a couple of things, I do want to let the bookstore owner, the, the, the banning book topic is about public uh, libraries and schools. So one thing that I think is really important to understand, especially for those of us like the majority in this room who are white Vermonters, is to know that yes, there are people in this state who are very invested in banning books. There are people in this state who are deeply invested in selling Confederate memorabilia and hanging Confederate flags and committing blatant acts of racism throughout the state and trying to promote uh, the shutting down of curriculum who are talking really, really consistently about problematic curricula and you know saying that um, critical race, they're, they're constantly saying that critical race theory is being taught in schools when people are just basically teaching about race and race conflict, which is part of the history of this country. I know I worked in a school library and with kindergarten students and they would come back really excited and they had a lot of military books that bombers, this and that, I, you know, that was their choice, but it was available for kindergarten students. So just was wondering, is there a policy in Vermont? Like how do, how do right. books end up in certain sections or perhaps not others? Yeah, it's something I'll have to go do some research on, but I think what you raise is an interesting point that what might be okay from one person's perspective mm -hmm. might not be okay from another person's perspective. So it may be um, military and violence and bombers to, our, to a kid. Others would say that's good education because you never know when we're going to be in a war and people need to be well prepared. Um, others some may say others, that racism, teaching about racism at a, at I was a baby, use other examples. Yeah. Might, not be, might not be appropriate for their children. Right. And others would say learning our history uh, of how people are treated and uh, both emotionally and by law and or by policing and or separate education is important history to know so that we don't return to some of those systems, which also, some of those still exist in this country. You know, it seems like this conversation is a little bit broader conversation than just books, it's media. We were talking about music, film. The internet is certainly a big source of information today. You talked about your Facebook page and having a photo banned. Um, you've talked about conservatives wanting to take some of these books out of schools there may be some books that aren't appropriate for kindergartners. We've got the World Health Organization trying to push sex education for babies. It's a little bit absurd, but that's what's going on right now. Um, where do you draw the line? You've got the other side of the street with the government censoring, clearly censoring. Missouri versus Biden right now, there's an injunction in place because the government's been telling Twitter and Facebook and others do not let this content in these areas out. And we've been censored. Isn't that restricting of our ability to think critically when we don't get the whole story? So a couple different pieces to this. One is the government role and others is private sector. So certainly where the government is starting to tell people what they can and cannot say, whether it's banning books and what's age appropriate is again, often in the eyes of the beholder. And all of us have different uh, perspectives on you know, sex education in fifth grade. Now with respect to Biden and Missouri, I honestly have to learn more about it. But when I did hear that there was potentially government telling a private organization what to do or not to do, if it was within the laws of our country that have been passed by Congress and up until that point hadn't been challenged by the courts, then that was a legitimate thing to do. If it was not within the laws of our country or saying something that was um, saying, don't publish that, that is hate speech. And we have on the books hate speech, that's legitimate to do until maybe the courts decide otherwise. I would just say, when we think about drawing lines in the sand, who's drawing that line? 
who is the person doing that? Think about that when you think about who makes the decisions. Who makes decisions? Who makes the decisions? Who's so, at the table? we're just talking about people who people who have been invisible that want to be visible, folks. That's it. And and as for the North Shire Bookstore, thank you all for coming. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all of the individual perspectives, and thank you all for being respectful of each other. <laughs> It's Again, it is a, it is always a sensitive conversation. As for the store, we view ourselves as a resource for information. So on any topic, we have it. And it's up to you if you want to access it here. Um, and if you do, we're happy to get it for you. So on behalf of my sisters and I, thank you very much. So what was your, uh, your takeaway from the discussion today? I thought it was interesting. I thought it was guarded. I thought, unfortunately, again, I live in Vermont. Uh, the race situation, I think, has been worse and more built up in the last four, five years than ever before in this country. And so it's good to have the conversation. But I, on the book I brought up, uh, I think parents have the right to bring up their own children. And I just think that we should be allowed to have a voice if there's another voice in the room. Afterwards, we had a chance to talk with the three co-owners of the bookstore, as well as Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman. I mean, do you get a lot of feedback from customers coming in, questioning banned books being available? Not or? a lot of feedback. We do get the occasional customer that turns a book around or covers up a book that they're not particularly fond of. Um, yeah, take it off the display and, and move it so that it's not as prominent. <laughs> I had a customer say to me, I, um, I sometimes come into your store and rearrange things. And I just thought that... <laughs> That's she was honest, but yeah. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> it's very important to hear those different viewpoints because, you know, we Vermont is is known for being a very liberal state, but there are a, a lot of different views here. And you know, as a store, we are a hub for information. If you don't want to read it, don't buy it. Yeah, I think. There was a that there are no fan books per se. My understanding in Vermont in, is that there are no fan books in Vermont today. However, it was confirmed this evening that there are people in this state who would like to see some books banned, um, and there are people running for office who would like to see some books banned. So um, it was an important conversation. Uh, we we definitely feel that we want to carry books that show everyone that that, they, that everyone sees themselves in a book. We're not going to take any books off the shelf that somebody tells us has to be off the shelf because they don't think it's appropriate. Representation is really important. Well, first of all, what was your takeaway from the discussion tonight? It was certainly, we had a range of opinions expressed. Uh, well, I think that's what a healthy society is about. Uh, having differing opinions, trying to make sure folks don't get too personally involved, but have a good conversation about the different perspectives and also to really break down some of the different uh, legal or governmental aspects versus personal opinion, because there's a difference. Um, and is, is it your feeling that uh, this is kind of a, this whole banned books question uh, is sort of a sh relatively short term uh, kind of problem that, you know, will be replaced in a couple of years by some other, you know, uh, concern that people have? Well, or, or is this a, a longer term question that we're going to be battling over for years to come? I mean, as Bob well, I pointed think, out, right. the roots go way back. But I just, you know, right. a couple of years ago. What's the hot item, right? Yeah. So I think there's two aspects to this. One is book banning and speech suppression and music and art has been going on in, since time eternal. So it will continue probably forever. It has blown up into a bigger issue in these last couple of years with thousands now of books being banned or challenged as opposed to hundreds in a given year. Uh, my guess is it will remain a pretty hot topic for the next number of years, but there will be other hot uh, social issues that are fomented, particularly by uh, the more conservative 
element of the political sphere because it really distracts from the fundamentally challenged issues of our society. Uh, we have an economy that's leaving a lot of people behind and they're scared and they're angry. And if they can be distracted and be thought, that, oh, it's the immigrants problems problem, that's why I'm struggling. Or gay people, we're paying too much attention to gay people. Or why are we paying attention to black people and their problems? You're not paying attention to mine. That's a political tactic by the right. When in fact, most gay and lesbian people, most people of color, and most white people are all struggling under the economic system that we have. But they don't want you to think about that. So they distract you with this kind of topic. Book banning may be one of those hot topics that remains warm for a while yet. For the GNL TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.